Welcome along to another Scottish FA webinar on the return to football. Delighted to say I'm joined, as always, by Head of Community Development, Paul McNeil, and National Club Grow Manager, Danny Bisland. Gentlemen, a lot to get through, I'm sure, but the important element of today is to kind of go through the guidance, updating everyone watching, and kind of give some important points. Paul, would you like to kick us off? Yeah, um, St. Louis, uh, thanks again for um, hosting this for us again. I think it's... Um, important days and um, Danny will come in and, and and add some context in here at a moment in time but I think what it is is it's been a long time you I mean since January we were delighted at the last update that we could give some guidance round about um, the under 12s being able to come back um, and again as, as we're able to now potentially start to so the route map yes there is still some things here we need to caveat a potential changes of the government um, are always um, reminding us that some things can change, some things can go in reverse, but of course we are now able to kind of start to look and plan that little bit forward. So we've got some indicative dates here, the 5th of April, where we're delighted that from that date that we know that the 12 to 17 year olds can come back into some contact training, um, again we'll go through some of the guidance there. By the 26th of April, again we'll be able to hopefully start to look at the potential for some formal match play activity to take place and again as we get closer to that date we will then be able to provide again some further clear guidance about what that means and so on and so forth and um, by the 17th of May again a, a, a bit further along but we thought today was quite a good date to put that date there that that is a potential date the adult contact activity in terms of 18 plus um, can come back and we can start to look and hopefully plan um, forward for that potential um, bit of an area. But we'll go through some of this guidance today. Again, some of it is um, again round about potentially that bit about the parents potentially being able to come back again as we move through the route map um, and on the dates as well that they could potentially maybe by the 26th we could provide another update of whether or not parents can come back and watch their, their children at the, the side of the pitch. But again, there'll be some guidance. And again, we have to caveat that there could be changes um, as we go. Danny, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add in there. Oh, I would just also like to mention the fact that we've obviously indicated the number of individuals that are, are permitted per bubble. That's got to include, you know, coaches, officials and players as well. Um, regardless of the size of area you're using, it's still the same amount within that bubble. So we're just asking people to use a common sense approach. Um, and if you can, just get as much activity going as you possibly can within within the, your facility. But it's great that we've got a route map now for, for the next little while. And hopefully we'll be able to give updates in the coming weeks um, as we route out this 26th to the 17th of May and, and beyond. So nothing else to add at this stage. Um, Lewis, as well, if 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 you, if you don't mind, what we would we would kind of just go back over again is um, just to kind of reinforce some of the the things. All the activities, Danny says, has to be outside. Um, we want everybody to make sure that they've got that appropriate risk assess venue, um, just to make sure that that we're doing everything as safe as we can. For us, we are talking today about everybody that's underneath our structure. So if it's a registered club within the within the Scottish FA um, or with one of the affiliated uh, associations. Again, as Danny says, at the moment in time from the 5th, it is about just training in your own club setting, not having mixed competition or events. Um, I think we covered that with regard to the potential for parents to come back. And I think the real important bit is, is we continue to keep up the high hygiene measures, the appropriate one-way systems and every other bit of COVID uh, protocol that's in place. Danny, I don't know if there's anything from the, the under 12s that you wanted to to add on. No, I just, uh, one of the big things that we've seen, we've seen some research taking place across Europe in terms of uh, motor skill development and inactivity levels, particularly for under 12 area, uh, age groups. And what we're seeing is that basically people have got to be really mindful that, you know, um, there's potential that these young players haven't done a huge amount over the past year. So be patient with them, play as much games as you possibly can. Gradually, you know, get back to the number of training sessions you want and you're permitted to do. Um, and, and really just, I would say, if possible, 
just make make it so fun that the children want to come back week in week out and I know that the you know every coach in the country wants to for, for that to take place so just make it as fun as you possibly can and there'll be lots of activity taking place in the coming weeks and months um the only real major change um we've got at the moment in time is the is the 12 to 17 year olds um although the bubble size is as Danny alluded to right at the start doesn't change uh, too much and we've got to make sure that that bubble size is the maximum uh, you can't go uh, I'm above that but the good news is that the 12 to 17 year olds can now take part in contact training we were non-contact training uh, before but now contact training is permitted um, for them to be able to, to take part in and again they can travel to get to the permitted um, activity which, which is great um, for this particular age group and again it shows us another one um, particular um, step forward uh, and allows us to continue on this kind of journey that, that we're going on and I think I reiterate what Danny said there we want to make sure that we're cautious about what we do people have not been taking part in physical activity for a long time so I think even within this group make sure it's fun make sure it's enjoyable and just maybe talk to the players as they come back they've been away from activity for a long while let's make sure as we do it we do it in a controlled and a fun and a, and a good environment that, that players are, are, are happy to come back for. Um, the other one that you just wanted to, to, to cover is that at this moment in time, there is no change to the 18 um, and, and above um, activity. And we just ask everybody to be patient with us. As we say that the roadmap, there is a way in which we can get back. Um, and at this moment in time, we're just trying our, our best to take that, that particular bit forward. So that, that's the kind of guidance done at the at the moment in time, Lewis. Yep. No, perfect, guys. Important guidance to remember and the differentiation between the age groups is another crucial thing for, for people to remember as well and probably just a, an important reminder in there. Moving forward, guys, uh, we've spoke about making it fun, but, of course, keeping it safe as well is, is crucial. Yeah, I'm sure Daniel will, will, add, uh, will add a little bit into this, but I think there's just some things here. We did this in the last um, webinar, of course, and, and we were joined by, at that point, um, some of our colleagues from our child wellbeing and our inclusion teams. So again, just to kind of go over them, just not to, to labour the points too much, but just to make sure that the front there, make this activity as fun as we possibly can. Potentially, if players are coming back, talk to them, Make sure they understand what they're doing. There's changes. They're going back into their school environment. They've got other things, other commitments in their life. Talk to them to make sure that they understand um, everything that they're doing and, and, and make sure that they're, they're enjoying it. I think the important bit is that we make sure that all those child wellbeing protocols are in place. So although we want to make sure that everybody's PVG'd, remember the other part there about that well-being, about making sure we're looking after children, that we're making it fun, that we're making making the, the environment safe. We can talk a little quick bit in a, in a second about the, the physical and mental health bit that, that Danny alludes to as well, but just a couple of things there um, as well. Make sure you're doing the COVID officer training. We've got that there. If we can get that message as wide to as many people as we can through the training it's it's on the, the return to football hub that's great and i think those other two bullet points at the bottom there the test and protect bit we need to keep sure we've got registers we're still living with the virus of covid at the moment in time so that's so important that you've got the bubbles you know who's there in case anything happens that you're able to to kind of go back and talk to who was there and, and where and what people were there at that particular moment in time and high hygiene measures are so, so important. Dan, I don't know if there's anything else you would want to add. Just a couple of things, just in terms of practicalities. First and foremost, just getting back into good habits for the parents, the players, the coaches, etc. We are recommending that people stay physically distant, you know, beyond this kind of sporting bubble. So once they're off the pitch, you know, um, we, we know that the size of clubs, there's so many different uh, you know, players at your facility. We're just recommending that people keep stay physically distant and that becomes a habit. Bear in mind as well that, you know, every child in the country is so used to doing their hand washing, you know, just keep it going for for, uh, for training. 
Um, just make sure that's part of your training sessions and information that you're sharing out. Paul said about the COVID training, it's available for players as well over the age of 13. It's also available for parents. It's just to reiterate you know, those kind of positive messages and keeping it safe as you possibly can. And then there's a last thing from my point of view that, you know, been involved in grassroots coaching, you know, it's just little small things, when, you know, drinks breaks, for example, try and space that out, you know, just little things that you can do to make the environment as safe as you possibly can. Just look at what you've got in, in place and then try and implement that as quickly as you possibly can. And the, the kids will just be absolutely delighted to be back onto the pitch. So you've got, a, you've got a, an audience there who I'm sure will listen to you. So, and thanks again to everybody who's spent all this time training and getting all these good habits in place and we're, we're, we're just keen to revisit them no I, I, and just one before we, we move on again uh Lewis is just there is some resources out there a number of our regions are tweeting some of these things out so just again just think about that mental well-being are we connecting with people if a player hasn't turned up can you maybe get back in touch with them maybe that routine again starting to just think about the, the things about how we can kind of do things to make sure that kind of mental well-being has been looked after as well as we can and just remember as well that some of the young people who will come back will maybe have have been in tougher times and and we just need to make sure that we're not pushing MD too much or, or doing anything but lots of good resources um on the website through our through the, the resources that we've got so we would just encourage everybody as much ammunition as you can have make sure you've got it make sure you've went and maybe researched it ask some people stretch out to our regional offices and ask as many questions as you can so you can do everything in, in the safe and controlled manner. So, Lewis, that kind of gives us that kind of little bit of a, an, an update around um, that particular area. Yeah, I think important points to remember as well. It isn't necessarily just the virus we're dealing with. I think mental well-being is, is so prominent and needs to be considered. So it's good to, to go over those points again and, and reiterate. Moving forward into to holiday camps, Paul, I guess there must be some more important information around this and, and something that people will be keen with, particularly around the, the Easter break. Absolutely, Lewis. And I think what we wanted to do was just touch on this this bit there because, of course, we've, we're now going to hit a, a holiday period and I'm sure some young people will, will, be, will be desperate to get out and do some more activity. So, yes, we know that a number of organisations out there will want to provide those holiday camps. Um, that provision is permitted underneath the guidance. But again, I think what we we'll want to be saying to everybody is make sure you understand the guidance. There is no difference from doing it. You have to follow that guidance. So, yes, multiple bubbles of what is allowed is permitted. The same on, on any pitch. But what we would have to reassure is that they can't mix so whoever comes in in that bubble should be in that bubble for the duration of the activity, not when they get to part of it, that they all kind of can mix together at maybe a break, as Danny says, maybe a water break if they come together. No, the bubble has to be the bubble for um, the entire day. There's some things we just want to make sure as people do it. Again, it's just reiterating that safety message. Make sure you've got the adequate insurance. Make sure you've got the adequate health and safety provisions in place. I think make sure you've got all the relevant child and wellbeing and protection processes in place. They're so, so important. And maybe just another checklist about that COVID pr protocols in place. Again, is there an adequate one-way system? That's really important. Is there physical distance measures and maybe signage up to say, this is what you do? Again, nobody hanging about and waiting in, in areas and congestion to make problematic areas happen making sure you've got that track and trace process in place and making sure you have the right sanitization, hygiene and everything else in place because you need to continually do that. So I think we just wanted to make sure that if they had that bit of a checklist, thought their things through before they go ahead and, and, and organize or some activity. And if they do that and it's in a safe and controlled manner, um, everything will be um, entirely fine. Danny, I don't know if there's anything you would like to add the only thing is the access to facilities. So obviously access to facilities may be limited depending on the local authority, the leisure trust, the provider you're working with, you know, access to toilets. is really, really important, particularly if you're asking individuals to be there for, you know, for a, a longer period of time, one, two, three hours, for example. So please make sure that you're, you're aware, that parents are aware of what processes and pro programmes you've got in place to cover that. Um, also, inclement weather, um, whilst we want it to be sunny and, uh, and, and warm, 
chances are that usually at spring it's a bit of a mixed bag. So if that's the case, you know, do you have uh, areas where people can stand safely, should be having climate weather? And again, have you made the parents aware of the processes you've got in place? So really just revisit more where we were probably October time last year and just all those processes that you've got in place just to just to make it crystal clear to everybody what we're committing to. Um, we think it's really, really important at the moment. No, I would agree with that. Yep. Thanks, guys. And crucial to go over those points for this, this spell of the year when there are going to be all the camps in place. It's just a crucial reminder to people to adhere to all protocols, even if it does feel a little bit different with longer sessions, etc. in place. So good to go over. And I guess the facilities is another crucial part, Paul, that people need maybe just a reminder of at the moment too. Yeah, I, th I think just to touch on it, and again, it's probably just, again, going through them again, just to make sure that... that that people understand those um, particular areas. Danny touched on it, that, that pinch points, just make sure there's no congestion, particularly over those Easter periods where there might be more people about, just to make sure that that's, that's done. I think they make sure that, that people understand that can, can there be a bit of gap before people come on and off again? Um, and I think that's really important that we're not just people hanging at the side of a pitch and then the next group going on. So making sure that the, the right space and the right timing um, of that uh, again. Um, I think that the other bit, and it's probably a bit that, that alludes to the, the Easter holiday camp and the bit there that we're using that right equipment, that the equipment sanitised at the right times and everybody's using their own equipment, not going and sharing it. So if you've got a bit in there and you think, oh, I'll just give that over to the other bubble, no, because that can cross contaminate some things. So make sure that we're, we're following all those rules that we've been following, believe it or not, for a year, but everybody's been doing it so well. What we just don't want to do, as we say at the, the, the start, is let that guard drop because that means we might, our roadmap might get pushed back a little bit. So, again, reiterating and thanking everybody for doing all this, but I think it's just making sure that we again remind ourselves of all these points so we can do them, we can do them correctly. Danny, is there anything to add in? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think there really is, other than the fact that there's a massive thanks for us. Um, there's a massive thanks. I, I don't think people really appreciate the number of clubs that we've got across the country, the number of players, the number of coaches, the number of facilities that are taking place. So, uh, I, do, I do genuinely mean this. If football is doing the right thing in terms of uh, our impact and, and we are following the protocols, it actually has a real significant impact into the population of the country. So please don't underestimate the impact you're having and, and thanks again for, for everybody's um, dedication up to this point. And the, and the last one, Lewis, we were just asked, um, and I think a few times, and we just quickly go over them, we, we've put some examples here of pitches, as Danny says, and again, not every pitch and everywhere will be, will be there. So it's again, looking at it, the bubble size can increase. Can people look and make sure that the environment they've got is as safe as they can and just try and follow that protocol as best as they can, making sure that they've got clear signage, clear one-way systems, the right space for the activity to go, to go forward. We know all pitches, grass pitches, areas are different, five-a-side courts are different, but just making sure that we follow the guidance and make sure that we're doing the best we can and, and making sure that the pitches are set up so they're in the safe environment. Probably this one uh, in terms of just the zones, and I think it's just like that Easter camp one, again, we don't want them to mix. So again, once they're in there, that's them for the duration of their activity and um, not going anywhere else. And I think that's that's so crucial that we, we remind that and we re keep reminding ourselves that we're working in bubbles, the bubbles can't mix, the space should be safe. And if we do that and we follow all the other guidance, um, we'll, we'll do really well. Danny, I don't know if there's anything lastly to, to add into that before we kind of finish up. No, nothing else for me. Well, thanks, guys. I think finishing there with, with those pitch set up bits of information is important. Again, um, nobody ever envisioned having to, to adhere to things like this. So having to go over them again and again is not going to do anybody harm. And again, I think I would reiterate Danny's earlier point that just a sincere thanks, I'm sure, from everybody involved, the, the commitment and dedication and, and hard work that's gone into to keep things moving and hopefully continue moving in the right direction as well. So Paul, Danny, thank you very much for, for joining us on this webinar. I hope it's been useful to everyone watching. Uh, some crucial information there to take on board.